Hey everyone, welcome to my library. My name is Melissa and <laughs> I'm wearing a hat and a um, office t-shirt today. Um, <laughs> it's a look, I don't know if it's that cute, but it's fine. Um, I just took the dogs on a walk as well, so they're really tired, but also wanting to be in the video. So we'll see what happens. Um, anyways, today I have my March wrap up for you guys. It's April 1st. And so, yes, the stack behind me is showing off the books I read or DNF'd this month. I did have two DNF's this month and they were both highly anticipated books for me. So it was really sad, but, um, but yeah, let's just get into it. I'm gonna go chronologically. The first thing I read in the month, it was the Jane Austen Society. And the author for that is Natalie Jenner. I'll show it right here. I read this on audio and it was so good. I loved it so much. It was the coziest, sweetest story. I gave it four and a half stars, which means it's a favorite of the year for me. Um, the narration was done really well as well, um, but basically this is the story about six individuals who end up crossing paths um, to join and be a part of this society that is all about preserving the life and works of Jane Austen. And um, they all end up somehow being in um, the town of Chawton. I'm not sure how to say it, but it's the town that Jane Austen was raised in, grew up in, and then died in as well. Um, and so anyways, the different individuals are all different types of people. We have a kind of country doctor. Um, we have a um, Hollywood starlet. We have um, a young widow. And anyways, all of their lives intermingle. And it's just kind of this really cute story about these, um, these people coming together for um, their love of Jane Austen. And I also love Jane Austen so much. There were so many references in here to her books. If you love Jane Austen, you should read this book. Um, and actually kind of the opposite, I would say, if you have never read Jane Austen, I don't know if I recommend this book. I don't know why you would pick it up, you know, based on the title, but um, there is a lot of references to her, her novels. And so it, it might not make much sense. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if, if you're an avid Jane Austen lover like me, you should read this book. It was so good. The narration is done by Richard Armitage, who is the, um, main actor in <clears throat> North and South. Uh, yes, heart eyes, love him so much as well. And so, yeah, it was just all around a great experience. Highly recommend. So the next book I, um, read physically and it took me literally three months to read, <laughs> is The Count of Monte Cristo. Yay, I finished it. I know I've talked your guys' ears off about this book, but um, yeah, finally finished it towards the beginning of the month. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I should go into a rant review about the ending, but I guess I'll just say that the ending brought it a whole star down for me. It was a five-star read until the ending. Um, something happens that I was not expecting. Um, it ends in a way very different from the movie and um, I was not happy with it. <laughs> um, I love the movie so much. It is so well done and I ended up watching the movie after I read this book because um, I just needed to refresh myself on that storyline to see how it compared. And wow, they are so different, so different. Like the beginning part is very similar, um, but basically for two thirds of the book, it's it's not even the same story, honestly. So kind of crazy, but, um, but yeah, so I ended up giving it a four stars. I still understand why this is a masterpiece and why everyone loves this book. Um, and I really did love the writing and I love the characters for the most part. I love the plot development. Um, but yeah, I mean, toward the end of this book, I literally had to take like a mile, um, cool down walk because I was so upset about it. <laughs> 
but um but yeah anyways okay so yeah gave this four stars the next book I read was my buddy read pick for the month of March and that was From Sand and Ash by Amy Harmon such a pickup from this um this was five star read for me like hands down my most favorite read of the month um and of the year for me it was so good um what the wind knows by amy Harmon was my favorite book of last year and so i had very high hopes for this one and it did not disappoint it is a world war ii forbidden romance between um a man who is a catholic priest he's italian and an um, italian jewish girl and they grow up together and they don't really understand um when they're when they're children they don't really get why um there's such a difference in their religion and then obviously um that comes way more into play when they're adults and um especially going through this time um, the really interesting aspect of this book that is true and is part of history is that the um, Roman Catholic Church actually helped hide Jews during World War II. Um, they were a big effort in saving a ton of Roman Jews' lives. And so this kind of goes off of that idea. And um, so this Catholic priest who has this best friend um, ends up, realizing that he can help hide her and so yeah that's kind of what happens she has to fake that she's catholic and she goes to this church and he kind of watches over her so loved it the romance in this was so good you guys know i love priest romances and um yeah this was no different it was just oh it just felt like a book written for me um if you love romance or historical fiction, you will love this book. Uh, I, I, it is very heavy on historical fiction, so maybe if you're really not into um, that genre, I don't know if I would like highly recommend this, but I would still urge you to give Amy Harmon a try. She really does write a great love story, and oh, it was it was everything. Um, a ton of people in my Buddy Reads Discord group also loved this book. Um, we were all just singing its praises. So yeah, I am just so glad that everyone um, enjoyed it. And thank you so much for participating and reading this with me. Um, yeah, what a great time. <laughs> okay, um, so the next book I read was a Buddy Read with Shay at Shay Geeks Out. She is a fellow romance booktuber and she reached out because she wanted to read Knight in Shining Armor by Jude Devereaux with me. And so, yes, we, um, we read this together. Uh, she read it at a much faster pace than I did. I got bogged down with work, so I, I finished like a, a week later than her. But um, yeah, I listened to this on audio. It was a great audio narration. Um, it's done by a very famous narrator that I didn't know was famous, but I mentioned it to Shay and she was like, oh yeah, like everyone loves him. Steve West, I think, or something like that. I'll, I don't know. I'll put it down here if I'm wrong. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it was really well done. Um, I will say, so this was five star feels up until like 60% in, things went so downhill. I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden it was just either really boring or just super out there. And I was struggling to follow the plot and really make sense of it in my head. Um, the love story also wasn't really a love story anymore. It was more just like um, political dynamics and like, you know, a ton of like scheming and stuff. And I, I think it just went off the rails, honestly. Um, and then the ending, you guys, the ending of this book was crazy. Oh my gosh. Uh, it was, it had this theme that I literally, I, I can't, I can't with it. <laughs> um, I had a, a lot of downhill endings in March for some reason. Um, yeah, you got Count of Monte Cristo and then this book, it was kind of disappointing, but I ended up giving this a three stars. It was still good, but yeah, it really went downhill. So there's this one. 
Um, okay, so now we're to our DNFs. I finished from Sand and Ash and it was such a high note and I was like, yes, I'm gonna try another book and it's gonna be great. And I'm just gonna have this great historical fiction reading month. So I ended up picking up Forever Amber, which was also on my TBR. Um, this is by Kathleen Windsor. I've owned this book for a while, so I'm really glad I gave it a shot. Um, I got 150 pages in, so I really did give it a good effort. Um, but the reason I DNF'd this book was I um, knew from the back of the book that this was supposed to be a um, kind of like romance that um, is very, it's like an unrequited love where she's always wanting and pining after this one man, but she can't ever have him is what the back kind of says. So I went into it thinking that and really wanting to see like who she ends up meeting that's this man that she, she loves that she can never have. And I was really concerned because um, the, the story behind this is it's about this girl named Amber who um, during the Restoration England period um, comes from nothing. She's in this small town. She meets this knight who is traveling through town and um, she's kind of known as like the town flirt. And um, anyways, she uh, she kind of has this escapade with this knight. And um, he's under the impression that uh, she's slept around and like she's kind of just up for grabs. And so they have this night together and she is kind of shocked by it all. And it really read like rape to me. And um, so anyways, what ends up happening is they go to London together and she kind of ends up accepting her fate as his mistress. And then she soon figures out she's pregnant. And so um, it kind of goes from her being pregnant and penniless in London to um, from what I understand from the back, building herself back up and, um, anyways, moving through society. So I did not think that the knight that was at the very beginning of the book who she's enamored with and is very like lustful towards would end up being the man that's like the one man she can never have. But then I started Googling it because I was 150 pages in and no one else had showed up. And I was like, there's no way that this guy that basically raped her is gonna be the, the, the main love interest. Turns out that that's true. <laughs> and I was so disappointed because like, I can't, I can't root for him. Um, he just, his character was very just skeevy and gross and I just was not a fan. And so I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to ship them. And if I can't ship a, a huge love story like this book, I'm not here for it. So, um, so yeah, I DNF'd it. Um, it was really fun, the Restoration England part and um, getting into the medieval um, times was really fun. But yeah, the characters were highly unlikable. And so I ended up DNFing and I don't regret it. <laughs> so then I was like, okay, well, DNF that book. Let's try another highly anticipated book for me and hopefully this one goes better. And it did not. <laughs> um, so the next book I picked up was Bright Captivity by Eugenia Price. This is a um, one of the top 12 books I wanted to read in 2021. So I'm officially checking it off the list. I didn't finish it obviously, but I gave it a shot. Um, I also got 150 pages. That's kind of about my marker for deciding whether I'm going to DNF a book is like really give it a hundred or so 150 pages and then, and then decide. So gave it 150 pages and, um, the love story that is promised to me in this book was not a love story. It was insta love, crazy fast insta love. Um, it's all about this girl who... <clears throat> She is growing up in um, Georgia in the time of the War of 1812. And she grows up on this plantation. She has a dad who is the plantation owner. And during this time, um, England came over to America and offered freedom to the slaves if they would leave the plantations they were on. 
And so <clears throat> um, these British soldiers are, soldiers are very much hated in um, the South. And so um, anyways, she ends up having this family party at this island that's close to her house. And um, when that party is happening, gets captured and um, they get held hostage by the British troops. And so uh, she ends up meeting this man that's part of this infantry and um, she falls for him instantly. He falls for her instantly. Um, they just like see each other across the room and uh, they just know that they should be together. And it was very unbelievable to my, like I just could not believe it. And then, um, yeah, so then he kind of courts her as he's holding her co her hostage along with like a ton of other people in town. And I was like, what? Uh, this doesn't make any sense. And um, anyways, it the, like half of the book was the political part of it where it was talking about, um, you know, what's happening with the war and what's happening with all these Southern states. And that part was pretty interesting. But then the other half, this love story that um, starts in this book and actually goes through two other books, it's a trilogy, it was just so fast paced. I could not understand how I was supposed to like wrap my head around them as a couple when they barely know each other and they're already professing each other, like professing love to each other. I just didn't buy it. So yeah. Long-winded explanation for why I DNF'd this book, but I am going to give Eugenia Price another shot. I have a ton of her books on my shelves, and I had such high hopes for her, so I'm really sad that this one didn't work out, but I really like the writing, so I hope another book with a different premise will be better. So, I'm not giving up on the author, but yeah, I definitely needed to DNF this one. So the last book I read in March and I actually finished, <laughs> which I'm so happy I did it because I was honestly really depressed after reading 300 pages of books and not finishing anything. Like that, that is the worst. Um, but anyway, so then I decided with the remaining time I had in March, I would pick up a nice um, smaller size historical romance. And this was also on my top 12 books I wanted to read in 2021. This is Always to Remember by Lorraine Heath. Um, uh, this is like the Lorraine Heath. Everyone talks about her. I love her books. Um, I read her Texas series, and I know that that is the group pick for the Rake Appreciation Society this month. And so I'm going to be joining in on the, the live for that. I've already read it. Like I read it a year ago, but uh, I hope everyone is enjoying that because I just really enjoy Lorraine Heath's writing. Um, and this was no different. Um, but this plot is really, really unique. So this plot is all about a man who is um, labeled a deserter. And um, he's from this Texas town. And he decided not, not to fight for the Confederate army, army because he um, is anti-slavery. And it was against his moral code. And so... Um, he refused to fight and um, he gets branded a traitor for that and he goes through a ton of horrible things happen to him. He gets sent to prison and obviously being labeled a traitor gets treated terribly, um, goes through like torture and stuff. It's really sad. So after the war is over, um, he's back in this small town he grew up in and the town hates him because all of their sons have died in the war. And um, so particularly the, the, the main heroine in this story, her name is Meg, her husband died in the war as well. And so she's a widow and um, she also just cannot stand him and doesn't understand the reasons why he decided not to fight. And so she decides that in order to get back at him and um, really ingrain it in his head that he's not welcome and also to um pay tribute to the fallen soldiers she did she asks him and commissions him to make a sculpture for the town um com like commemorating all of these soldiers that died and he is a sculptor um that's what his skill is and so he accepts it um 
because he actually really has a good friendship, had a good friendship with her before the war. And so anyways, the story goes from there where they're obviously major enemies, a huge misunderstanding between the two of them. And over the course of him making this sculpture and her overseeing it, they um, end up re like not rekindling, but um, rekindling a friendship they used to have. And then that buds into a romance. And wow, what an emotional story. I, it It's so short, but it's just packs such a punch. Um, there was also a lot of side characters and family elements to this story that I really loved. And um, the story of redemption about this man who is completely misunderstood in town and how um, he kind of proves to others why he deserves to be there. And um, anyways, I just, I just really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, it wasn't a five star read. Like it just didn't have those five star feels. Um, it wasn't anything that really, really impressed me like from Sand and Ash. I'm very strict with my five stars though. Like very strict with them. So that's another thing to note. But still, I really love the story and I'm so glad that not all of my top 12 books I'm choosing are duds. <laughs> just a few, just a few. But okay, so these are all of the books I read in March or at least attempted in March. Um, please let me know if you guys read any of these books or what your favorite books were in March. I would love to hear. And with all that being said, please like and comment. I reply to every single comment. And please subscribe if you want to see more from me. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye! Thank you.